Hi friends, this is Dave of javacodejunkie.com and welcome to another Java Swing video tutorial. In today's episode, we're going to look at another of the layout managers that's available for Java Swing. Now this particular layout manager is called MIG Layout and it is not included with the Java Swing package. So in this episode, we're going to download MIG Layout. We're going to create a user library and attach it to our project. And then we're going to look at some of the more interesting basics of the MIG Layout Layout Manager. First things first, let's open up a browser. And let's go to the Maven repository, mavenrepository.com. And I'll leave a link to that in the description. And in the Maven repository, we're going to search for MIG Layout. And from the list of search results, the first one that we're going to download is the MIG Layout Core. So let's click on MIG Layout Core. I'm going to download version 5.3, even though there is a newer version 11 that was released in April of 2021. So click on 5.3 and then click on View All under the Files section. And this shows you all of the files for MIG Layout Core version 5.3. I'm going to download three files here, the Java doc, the sources, and the core jar. And these are the three largest of the files in this folder. Once you've downloaded them, let's go back, and then we're going to download MIG Layout Swing. Same deal, version 5.3, view all files, and I'm going to download the Swing Java doc jar, the Swing sources jar, and simply the swing jar for 5.3. And again, they are the largest of the files in this folder. These are the only files that we will need to download in order to use MIG layout in a swing project. Let's now go to Eclipse, where I've already set up our standard project. And let's right click on the project name, go to Build Path, Configure Build Path, Libraries, Click on Class Path, Add Library, click the User Library button, click New. I'm going to call this MIG Layout. Click OK, and now click Add External Jars. Now I have taken all of these jar files that we downloaded and I put them in a folder under my Development Programs MIG Layout folder. We see the core jar file as well as the Java doc and sources for core and the same for swing. So here we're going to click the core and the swing file and click open. Click apply for core. Then I'm going to attach the source file. We're going to browse to an external location. Click on source. Click on core sources. Click open. Click OK. Same for Swing, Edit, External Location, External File, Sources for Swing, and click Open. Click OK. And now we're going to also add Javadoc. So back up to Core, Javadoc Location, Edit, Javadoc in Archive. We're going to search for the Archive Path, Javadoc for the Core, click Open, Path within the Archive, click on the file, click OK, and click Validate, OK, and OK, and the same for Javadoc for Swing. Edit, Javadoc in Archive, browse for the Archive Path, click on Swing, Javadoc, click Open. The path within the Archive, click Browse, click on the location, click OK, and then Validate, click OK, OK, Apply and close. Choose MIG Layout. Click Finish. Now that's added to the class path after we've created it. And of course, I see here now that I have misspelled MIG Layout. So let's edit. Take out the extra O. Click OK. Apply on the checkbox to select MIG Layout. Click Finish. It's now been added to the class path with the correct name. And we'll click Apply and Close. So we've downloaded all of the necessary MIG layout files from the Maven repository. We've also created a new user library within Eclipse, and we've added those 
files from the Maven repository that we downloaded for MIG layout to that user library. The user library has then been added to our Swing project. Now that we've created and added our user library for MIG layout to our project, let's go to the initialize method of our code and see how we're going to create or add that layout to our user interface. You should be familiar by now with the default layout manager for a JFrame, which is a border layout, as well as the default layout for a JPanel, which is the flow layout. I'm going to create and use MIG layout as the layout manager for our JPanel. Now we can do that in one of a couple of ways. First is just to simply create the layout using the default constructor, new MIG layout. I'm going to add nine buttons to our JPanel. Panel.add, new J button, button one, and likewise for the other eight remaining buttons. We'll organize our imports again using Control shift o We'll save and now run. You'll see that even though we're using MIG layout as our layout manager for the JPanel, it's acting the same as the full layout. Controls are added one at a time from left to right. If, for example, I wanted to have three rows of buttons, I could simply specify that when adding the button using panel.add. After the third button, there is another form of this add method that allows me to specify some text, and the text to move to the next row is simply the word wrap, W-R-A-P. And if I do it again after the sixth button, wrap, and run, we should now have three rows of three buttons. We can change the size of our J frame and nothing changes with the buttons because we haven't specified any further parameters that would enable us to do that. So that's one way to work with MIG layout. There are some documents that will help you with MIG layout. We can go to miglayout.com, which is this web page. We can scroll down to the MIG layout downloads section where we see we have access to a quick start guide, which we can download, a cheat sheet, which we can also download or view in HTML. There is a white paper that gives us the highlights of MIG layout. And there's also the API Java doc. So the white paper, here is what that looks like. The quick start guide, again, shows you a little more terms of examples of how to use MIG layout. And the cheat sheet actually has all of the different parameters for the layout and for the columns and the rows that you can use in MIG layout. So that's the first way that we can use MIG layout using the no argument constructor and then providing parameters when we add the controls to our container. So let's just remove those for now. We can also enter parameters for our layout when creating our layout manager. So the second form of constructor for MIG layout contains three string parameters. So I'm going to enter the first as quotation marks, the second as quotation marks, and the third as quotation marks. In the first parameter for our MIG layout constructor, we enter arguments that are related to the layout as a whole. I'm just going to skip this for a moment, then we're going to go to the next one, which is for column arguments. Here we can specify the number of columns, and that's done by using the square brackets, one for each column. So I'm going to have three columns. Same thing for rows, one, two, three. And when I run at this point, you should see no difference from our flow layout, and there it is. But if I were to put in the word wrap, in the layout parameter argument, then the layout manager will respect the number of columns and rows that we've set up in the column and row arguments for that MIG layout constructor. Running it again, we should now see three rows and three columns. We can specify things like inter-column spacing, let's say 25 between the first and second, and 50, and these are pixels by default, 
between the second and third, and the same with rows, we can say 75 and 100. When we run at this point, you'll see what that looks like. Or we can simply specify the same between columns and rows of 10 pixels. And this is what the resulting layout looks like. In the layout parameter, we can also add additional arguments by separating them with the comma. Things like insets, which will give us a border of 10 pixels around our user interface. And another one is fill, which actually allows the grid to take up the full size of our user interface when we resize. So let's see that in action. So you'll see that there is now 10 pixels around our UI. And if we were to resize, you'll see that our J panel now takes up the entire amount of space based on how big we've resized. There's also a debug parameter that allows us to see the controls in our MIG layout. I'll just turn that on by saying debug. We'll run again. And now you see that our J panel shown with the blue outline takes up the entire amount of space in our J frame. And each of the buttons actually takes up a proportionate amount of space within our J panel. We also have parameters in MIG layout, which we can use for alignment of controls within a cell, as well as specifying growth and spanning of cells, both rows and columns, so that controls can take up more than one cell. I'll just show you one more example to get you started. Uh, this is an example that's in the miglayout.com documentation. So I'm just going to remove what I've done here. And let's go back to miglayout.com. We'll scroll down to the bottom of the page. And I'm just going to copy and paste this section of code into our program. I'll create these variables. So I've created all of the variables here that are necessary for this example to work. I've created three labels and three text fields. And then I've added those to our J panel, the first name label, the first name text field. Then we have the last name label, the last name text field using gap unrelated for the label and a wrap after the last name. And then we have an address label and an address text field specifying a span, which means it will span all of the columns that are remaining in the current row. And the component will also grow to fill that space. So let's run and see what that looks like. So there it is. We have the first name and the first name text field, last name and last name text field, as well as the address and the address text field. So you'll see that it spans the entire space. These are some of the basic things that you can do with MIG layout. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing as well so that you don't miss any videos when I release new content. It's been a pleasure having you here today as always, and I hope to see you again in the next video. Until then, stay safe and keep on coding.